What is up guys, it's your boy Welsh Boyle and I'm back today. I haven't done the name change yet. I'm still thinking of name because I've had people say don't change it and stuff because it's basically who I am now. So, But yeah, today is a very special video with less than a week if you live in the UK. It is going to be the biggest cinematic event for a hell of a long time. And that is Infinity War is finally hitting theatres in the UK. So... I'm excited. I've got my tickets pre-ordered for Thursday. I cannot wait. I'm going to see it in IMAX, so, you know, go big or go home. Um, I have a nice cup of joe here as well, just to uh, drink while we do this video. And I will run down my live and die list, plus, as a very special, where do I think the Soulstone is, because we still don't know where that is, at the end. So let's dive into it quickly. Some of you guys might not like this. These are just my personal opinions on where, who's going to die, who's going to live, who's 100% living, 100% dying. Um, some of these are a bit either or, so some do have two on them to be like, right, if this person don't, then this one will. So I'm going to start off, kick it off with my live list. Let's start off on a positive note, sir. With Iron Man. I do think Tony Stark, even though he set it off, he set the ball rolling in motion about 10, well, 10 years ago, 2008 now, Iron Man came out and he kicked off the MCU. When he, they first done the first Iron Man, they didn't know that this was going to happen. They didn't know of anywhere near the slightest bit of idea how big this will get. So they added in Nick Fury in a little post credit scene being like, hey, we got an Avengers idea. But that's all it was at that time. It was just an idea. They didn't even know if the film was going to make money. Obviously it did. It made a hell of a lot of money. Um, people responded positive. They made number two. Obviously we know where it is now. And yeah. So I do think. I mean everyone says Iron Man is a potential candidate for dying because of that. But I do think now. He's not. I think. Iron Man's kind of like the heart of it. Like everyone says Captain America is. But let's be fair. Iron Man started it all. You could argue there that Hulk did as well, but we're not going to go there. That film was... I, I like it personally, but hey. Um, but yeah, I don't think they're going to kill him off. They're going to retire him. I mean, let's be fair, he's get, getting engaged, or got engaged, at the end of Homecoming to Pepper. Um, yeah, there's, there's no way they kill him, I don't think. So, moving on from Iron Man to Spider-Man. Let's be fair, guys. Marvel have only just acquired Spider-Man. They've only just acquired the whole rights to use that character in the MCU. They're not going to get rid of him this quick, this fast. Just having one movie, one solo movie, and one movie where he's also just like, you know, well, I won't say cameo. He did have a big role in it, but in Civil War, but... You know what I mean, it's just like, it, it don't seem logical, but they've paid all this money to share it with Sony and then just chuck them away. Obviously they have brought in the whole idea that Miles is in this universe, because Aaron Davis, the dude who he tapes up and says, uh, interrogates, or tries to interrogate, um, <clears throat> yeah, he, he's the uncle of Miles Morales, Miles Morales turns out to be the next Spider-Man, if you guys don't know, um, he turns out to have this cool black suit. Um, well, black and red suit. But yeah, I, I don't think you're going to chuck away Peter Parker just so soon. I mean, maybe give it four or five movies down the line. Obviously, including Infinity War. I mean, I mean yeah. Because Infinity War is a big one for everyone. Right, we're going to move on from Spider-Man. Because Spider-Man is quite an obvious one off. If he does die, he's coming back in a way. He's, he's, I, I, that's what I mean by who lives. They might die, but he might come back. But they are coming back, that's what I mean. Right, moving on from Spider-Man, Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is an Infinity Stone, yes. We know that. That's been confirmed, that's been out there. Obviously, the Eye of Agamotto is a Time Stone. Um, but, again, they've only just started with him. He's had one solo movie, one cameo, and boom, Infinity War. They are not going to kill off someone who... Um, fair enough, the movie didn't make as... It wasn't... Like a big summer block or whenever it came out, big blockbuster of the year. But it was a bloody really good movie. And it was, it did make him a hell of a lot of money. 
and it was a gamble what paid off. Sorry guys if I go quiet like that, because you guys probably won't see me because of, I like photos. Um, but yes, I do think Doctor Strange will live. Um, again, we have seen him being tortured. Again, I'm not saying that these guys will not get damaged. I will not say, I'm not saying that they will not, you know, l maybe lose a limb if they want to go down the Star Wars route or whatever. All I'm saying is they will be alive at the end. Now, moving on from Doctor Strange, we have Star-Lord. Star-Lord is a pretty obvious one for me. I think he will live because he is essentially the centre and the poster boy of Guardians movies. Now, we've already, James Gunn's already said number three, uh, volume three, sorry, is going to mix it up a bit with, obviously, the roster. But I think, I, I still believe the Star-Lord's going to be there. If they're going to kill him, they are going to kill him in the, in the last Guardians movie. They're not going to kill him any sooner. I mean, but I know he says he's going to mix up a roster, but that, that could mean anyone. That could mean, you know what I mean? It could even mean people just coming in. Right, moving on from him is Black Panther. Now, this is a pretty obvious one. I mean, I, I'm drinking from Black Panther mug right now. That should tell you guys how big this movie was. That movie has made more money than any, and I mean any, Marvel movie to date. And I say to date because Infinity War is not out yet. So next week, this could all change. <clears throat> but, no, Black Panther has made more money than any Marvel movie has ever done. But I do think, and I do believe, that the intentions they had for him... Obviously, before it became his massive marketing appeal to um, to everyone and this this mass of a film, I do believe their hearts and their intentions were in the right place. Because they were bringing this character in, the character of one nobody knew about, um, unless obviously you read comics. They were trying to sell him to an audience who already had the Spider-Mans. They already had the scene like the Hulk's, you know, Iron Man films. Stuff like that. They want to bring something different in, and this one is very different. It's very futuristic, very techy, and I I love Black Panther personally. I think they did mess up with the villains, and I say that in a nice way, because I think they messed up by not keeping them around. Big spoiler: if you guys haven't seen Black Panther yet, if you haven't, why haven't you? But big spoilers: the villains do not stick around at the end of that movie. But again, those villains are so good. They should have kept him on. It's like Loki. Loki was so good. People loved him. Again, Eric Killmonger. He was... Fin Michael B. Jordan's portrayal of that was incredible. They could have kept him around. They could have kept, you know, fleshing him out, bringing him in. He could have been the next best villain. You know what I mean? He, he is the best villain, to be fair. Um, Yusuf Klau, um, played by Andy Serk. So I guess, however you say his last name. I loved him so much. His portrayal was incredible. And again, gone too soon. But yeah, that concludes really my, or finishes my live list. So we're going to get on to the depressing part now of who is popping their clogs, who is dying, who is going to a big playground in the sky, who is, you know, back of you no, know, lack of better terms, whose time is up basically. I mean, let's be fair, there's, there's a few. I mean, it was actually harder to pick ones who I wanted to see die than who I wanted to see live. That's really weird to say, because when you think Marvel, you don't think, these guys are gonna die, these guys ain't gonna be here much longer. But, yes, right, start off with my dead list. Guys, grab the tissues, it's going to get wild. First one I'm gonna go with is Vision. I mean, everybody knows, um, Vision has a mind stone planted straight center of his head. Um, and of course, Thanos is going to need that. How the hell is he going to get it out of his head? He's not just going to like tap him on the back and it's going to fall out. So yeah, I don't think he's going to get killed. And I don't think he's going to die in a very brutal way. I think it's the first time where the MCU was kind of like going, right, we need something different. We need something dark. We need, we need to move this up a bit. So yeah, I do believe he's going to die in a very, very brutal way. Um... Whether it's going to be the beginning of the film, whether it's going to be the end of the film, I have no idea on that. Um, I'm hoping it's the end. I love Paul Bettany as Vision. I loved him as Jarvis as well. Um, 
but yeah, sadly I do think is 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 these numbered on us because we haven't really got a big story we can drag him into any further. Not about really bringing in um, some major characters who we just haven't got yet. Right, next one is probably going to be Loki. Sadly, I know everybody loves Loki. I love Loki. I don't want to see Tom Hiddleston go, but end of the day, guys, you got to think about this logically. He's a very big actor now, and he, from a financial point of view, um, Disney cannot keep afford, can afford to pay some of these big actors to stick around because, of course, the more films they do, the more their paycheck goes up. So, yeah, I do believe with Loki is kind of a weird one because. If they've done the whole, he's dead. Oh, I know he's back alive. No way he died again. No way he's still here. So I think a third time we are going to have to see him die on on screen, and I think that's going to be heart wrenching for most fans. Mainly because Loki is such a key character, he's such a prominent point in in the MCU. But when he goes, it's going to be like losing part of a family in a way because everybody loves Loki. But yeah, I think his days are numbered. I think he's going to go out on a high. Personally, I think he's going to do it. As he would want. I think he's going to give. Go to go give. Thanos the Tesseract. And. Turn out. That it's not really him. Because you know he's a mischief. This is how I think it's going to go down. Because he's a lot of mischief. We got a mischief. It's just going to be one of his. His. Um, we call it his projections. And then he will. Be spotted trying to. Three. Thor from like whatever and he will start fighting Th Thanos in like a you know in a protection way and he will die right in front of Thor giving fooling Thor really for the rest of the movie um again with him obviously we see a lot of Asgardians slain in the first couple of minutes of the movie because well I'm what I'm presuming will be the first couple of minutes because the end of Ragnarok is the beginning of Infinity War is right Bear with me now. If you've seen Ragnarok and you've seen the post credit scenes, you know that big ship comes up right in the end when Thor's saying to Loki, I think everything's going to be okay now. Ship. It's like, oh. That ship is Thor's ship. Uh, Thor? Thanos' ship. They've already come out, they've already said it. Um, so yeah, I do believe that's going to be within the first couple of minutes of the movie, sadly. Um, obviously, if you don't die, I will be a little bit shocked. But, yeah, it's a hard one to think about because he could live, but he could die. It's it's tough. And we're going to move on from him now because this one's kind of a two-parter. This one is either going to be one person or the other. There is no in-between. It's going to be Gamora or Nebula. And the reason I say that is, of course, they are the daughters of Thanos, the adopted daughters of Thanos. One who he kind of, he didn't love, but he kind of like, he cherished her as like his champion. And then the other one, and who he wanted to be like the other one. So he kind of, you know, <clears throat> as we know from Volume 2, he ripped out her eye, he ripped out, uh, ripped off her arm. Um, he done something else to her head, that's why she got the whole metal centre part on top of her head. Um, but yeah, I do believe it's going to be one of the other. And I do believe they're going to go out in quite a heroic way. Because I, I do think like one of them will die right in front of the other one. And it will, or saving the other one. And it will fuel and stoke fire for the other one to like put. I wouldn't say put more effort in because obviously it's such a big thing. But like, I don't know it'll get them emotionally angry at Thanos and get just you no know, add to that build up of why they want to kill him, why they want him dead, <coughs> why they need to do it now. Personally, I do think it's more Gamora that will die instead of Nebula, and my reasoning is. From a story point of view, Nebula has always been seen as kind of a villain. So it's like, because she was a villain in the first movie, anti-hero in the second movie. Yeah, see, they they kind of like leading up to it, and I think like seeing her sister sacrifice herself to save her, it kind of clicks. And like, right, this is what we gotta do. This is no, this is. He's going to kill everyone. This guy has taken my arm, my eye part of my head and now my sister from me no he needs to die and if working with you guys 
is going to help out, then I'll, I'll do it. You know what I mean? I think she's going to like turn a new, a new chapter in there. And it'll also be interesting, and it kind of makes it up for what James Gunn also said about the third Guardians movie being kind of a mix-up. Um, but yeah, I do personally think it'd be more Gamora than Ebla. Again, everyone's entitled to their own opinion of that one, which one will die, which one will live. Um, yeah, personally me, Gamora. Right, I'm going to move on to this, to another Guardians guy who I think will die. And it's kind of hard, because I love this dude so much. Um, I think Drax will die. The reason is that he's hot-headed, he's bad-tempered, he... Let's be fair, guys. He he's not a team player in a way. If when it comes to fighting, he's almost got himself killed once before with Ronan. You know what I mean? He kind of charged into battle with our one, and he got his ass handed to him. So, at the end of Guardians one movie, he said, "No, Gamora says to him, your your wife and daughter can rest easy now." And he's like, oh, "What does he say?" He says, "Um." Something along the lines, anyway, of Ronan was only the puppet. It's Thanos I really need to kill. I think that's actually the proper words he says. Well, hey, good, good, good brain. But, um, yeah, so I do think when he goes after Thanos, and it'd be a good way, it, listen to this, this is a good thing if he dies. He'll go after him, he'll try killing him in a hot rage, and he will die. Not only will it be an emotional impact for the Guardians here, but, and a physical one, obviously, for Drax. But it will have, like, it'll have an impact on the audience because Drax the Destroyer is like a strong, brooding type character. He's, you know, he gets hit, he takes a big hit, he goes down, he gets back up. Maybe this is a time where he goes down and he just does not get back up. Maybe this shows how powerful Thanos is. And again, but he's not messing about. He will, you know, kill these guys if he has to. He will mess their shit up if he has to. And I think by killing off someone like Drax, it's it's just like showing the audience, more, you know, this is what I can do. I mean, Drax died, one of the most powerful hard hitters. It'd either be him or Hulk, and I really, really highly doubt they kill Hulk, Hulk off, because Russo Brothers said in an interview that the next three movies uh, is like one solo movie for for Hulk, like it's a Hulk arc, going through it all, and it started in Ragnarok, so it's gonna end in Avengers 4, whatever it's gonna be called. Personally, I know what I want it to be called, and I really want it to be called The Fallen Soldier. And with that being said, this is why. Moving on to our last one now, because obviously you've heard who I want. I wanted Loki, Gamora, Onebla, Vision, and Drax. Those four. Again, Loki, I kind of want to die because I can't see her, see her happening as a story point of view. We have a three, same with Vision, though, to be fair. So Vision has to die because obviously my son. We have a like, three, technically, what I mentioned. There's a balance. They could die, they could live. Either way, I would, it wouldn't matter as long as it fits the story. This last one is so good that it has to, it has to come out because... As much as it rip everyone's heart and soul and send them out, it'll be a very big impact on the MCU. I'm about to go. I'm going with Captain America for my final one of who will die. Main reason is because Steve Rogers now has been Captain America for First Avengers, uh, Captain, Captain America First Avengers something, Avengers Age of Ultron Winter Soldier. I know I probably messed them two up. Yeah. Winter Soldier, Age of Ultron, Civil War. Technically, he did come back in Homecoming, in a way. But she got Homecoming on the background. Um, and obviously, now Infinity War. Um, Chris Evans' contract is up soon. <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys, you got a bit of a cold. But, um, yeah, his contract's up soon. So. He's he's bound to bite bite for dust at one point or another. Um and I do believe it's more sooner rather than later, sadly. As much as I don't want it to happen, it, I, I think it will happen because um I don't know, it's from a story point of view now. 
he wants to give up being Cap, the best thing for him to do is die. As weird as that sounds. Plus, if we're going back to Age of Ultron here, uh, I know Wanda was messing with Tony's mind, but hear me out here. If Tony saw the future and he saw, obviously, how it's going to play out, he's very kneeling next door to Tony. Uh, next door to Steve, sorry. And Steve dies. And there's one scene in a trailer, and I'm going to see if I can find a picture to put up now. There's one scene in a trailer where Tony is kind of like, you can see he's very sad, he's very upset, and it's like, you know in his head he's seen this. He, he knows what was coming. So it's kind of more like, <coughs> it's kind of playing out to his fears. So he'll also stalk it in the story way. Now, an emotional way for, well, emotionally, if he dies, Bucky will go nuts. But I think Bucky will take up the mantle. And everyone wants to see that. It's, it's the logical thing to do. We've been training him for, like, the past couple of movies. It's it's going to happen sooner or later. Whether him or Sam Wilson, also Falcon, takes up the mantle, it's... It's anyone's guess at the moment. Personally, I do think it'd be more Bucky, sadly, because I w I'd love to see Sam become uh, Captain America. But, hey, who's to say what Marvel have going in those brains of theirs? But, yeah, I do think Captain America's going to bite the dust in this one. Because the next time we see him, will be in Avengers 4. And it will be for a... A... What do you call it? A time travel... Uh, scene because he's wearing his uh, first Avengers suit so I'm kind of wondering will how that will play into it but I do think he's going to die and I'm uh, Tony's going to be like look this is all on me I'm going to go back and save him hence why the time travel in the next one but I think his death death is going to be such a prominent point in there but he saved so many lives but if Tony changes it it could have dire impact on everybody else any of the other Avengers so I think it is going to be one scene in Avengers 4 where he's like Tony just let me die this is how I want to go out I want to go out fighting my, my life has always been for war Um, it's always been to fight alongside friends and die alongside friends and dying alongside you now is, is basically a friend and I think that that kind of thing will happen so Tony's because Tony's story needs to evolve now. Because Rob Down Jr. has been Iron Man for 10 years. He's not going to want to be it anymore. So having this happen to Tony could be the farewell they need to uh, be like, right, Tony needs to retire now. He's seen too much shit. He needs you know, he needs time alone. And that's how we could kind of take him out. From a financial point of view, Chris Evans' contract is up. Chris Evans is done after the fourth one. He's actually come out and said he's done. No more, no less. He's done. He wants to move on. He wants to have other stuff to do. So, his contract's up. If Money-wise for Marvel, if you've got to think about it, they need to pay him a hell of a lot of money just to keep him around now. Because he's done. He, he don't want to be in it anymore. Well, he just, no, he don't want to, but... His contract's done. He, he hasn't said he wants to renew it. He hasn't said anything about it like that. So, maybe... Pass him saying... Guys, I'm done. So, yeah, if Marvel wants to keep him around, they're going to have to pay him a hell of a lot of money. I don't. I don't think it'll be a good thing to do. I think it, have, killing him off in Infinity War. He was supposed to die in Civil War. If you read the Red comics, he does die of a hand of crossbones. Obviously, crossbones um, death was right in the beginning of Civil War to be like, guys, look, he's not dying in this. So it was kind of okay. Where are you guys going with this? But have him dying like the biggest spectacle of cinematic history would be so good. It'd be incredible. It'll be that, that going out where everyone wants for him. But yeah, guys, that, that's it on the death list. Move on quickly to where I do think the Soul Gem is, or Soul Stone. Personally, I think Hamdal has it. Now, bear with me. <coughs> Hamdal, obviously, friend of Loki, uh, friend of Thor, though. He has it because he can see everyone. His eye, Look at his eyes. His eyes are piercing gold. Same as a stone. Now, whether it's, it is his eyes, whether it's the jewel on, <coughs> on top of a sword, because everyone keeps on about the sword, so possibly. 
Hamdal's in my death list a lot, guys, because because of this reason. I didn't want to say it any, any sooner, but it's because I wanted to say this theory. I think Hamdal will die, and the sword it'd be I've I've got it on his person, as in like in his body somewhere. Or it'd be on the sword. The sword's a very good idea. Um, the sword is a brilliant idea, in fact. But yeah, I do think Hamdal has it, and I do think he'll <coughs> Thanos is about to kill him. Apparently, the directors have come out and said um. John Apney Russo said, it's in Wakanda. So what I'm kind of thinking is, what if, as Thanos is taking over the ship, Hamdahl just runs and chucks the sword fly in, and it just so happens to land in Wakanda. He wants to get rid of the sword. He, he doesn't want Thanos to get it. Think about it. He's just going to, like, chuck the sword, sacrifice himself. And again, that'll be Stoke, Stoke in a fire again for Thor. Because he just seen his brother die. He's just seen his best friend die. You know, his his friends all died at the hands of his sister because because she wanted power. He he's sick and tired of this shit happening. So yeah, I do think Hamdal has it. I do think it's on, on part of, maybe it's something in his sword. Maybe it's something on him on his person. Everyone said it was his armor, but that would make sense because his armor changes number three in Ragnarok. So it's a bit mm, yeah, I doubt that. But he's always got the sword on him. The sword is constantly on him, so I do believe it'll be in there. Hence why you can see so many people, because he's not sensing them, he's sensing his souls. That's what I believe. So yeah, guys, thank you for that, and this is it over now. I, I'll try if I can think of any more theories, I'll bring them out before, obviously, Infinity War hits, because I'm about to see it in, on Thursday. Of course, guys in America don't get to see it till Friday, sadly. People in the Netherlands are via landed because they get to see it on Wednesday. I mean, I hate them all right now. But at the same time, I don't care. It's finally coming out. This is what we've been waiting for for 10 years. 18 movies. It's coming down to this one. It's coming down to crunch time. And it's going to be spectacular, like we all know. So, guys, I will leave you with that. And if there's any more things I can think of, if I don't have time between now and obviously Infinity War coming up, I will let you guys know, I will put another video up, but yeah, thanks for that, and I will see you guys next time, bye.